Hello everyone, welcome to our next video that is on the management of sodium hypochlorite accident and how to prevent it. So first of all, what we have to remember is that as sodium hypochlorite is a bleaching agent, so a plastic bib should be there to protect the patient's clothing. Then a protective eyewear is important for the patient as well as the operator because sodium hypochlorite is very toxic at higher concentrations. Then a rubber dam is definitely required if you are doing endodontic procedures to avoid any spillage into the mucosa or the surrounding areas. Then another important thing is side exit lower lock needles as we can see here. And another important factor here is that please do not force the needle into the canal. It has to be loose. It should not bind with the surrounding dentine when we are irrigating it. Then placement of irrigation needle minimum 2 mm short of the working length. So for that what we can do is we can put a rubber stopper and measure it before placing it into the canal. So this will avoid the apical extrusion of sodium hypochlorite which can actually cause a lot of irritation to the patient. Then again no, no pressure or wedging of the needle into the root canal. What are the uh, injuries that can be caused in a sodium hypochlorite accident. So first of all, eye injuries. So when by chance it gets spilled on the eyes, so what we have to do is irrigate gently with normal saline. If normal saline is insufficient or unavailable, then tap water can also be used. And refer to uh, ophthalmologist for further opinions. Now, one important thing here is that irrigate gently. So make sure that do not uh, in, when you are panicking, do not put uh, like, you know, splash the saline onto the patient's face because if we do that, it can actually spread on the sides and on the rest of the uh, face along with eyes. So we should make sure that we do it gently. Then in skin injuries, wash thoroughly and gently with normal saline or tap water. If there are oral mucosa injuries, which is very likely if we are doing a treatment, dental treatment, uh, then we have to go for copious rinsing with water, analgesia if required. If visible tissue damage, then we have to go for antibiotics to reduce the risk of any kind of secondary bacterial infection. And if there is any possibility of ingestion or inhalation, you have to refer the patient to the emergency department. Now further for inoculation injuries, you have to give ice or cooling packs for the swelling during the first 24 hours. Heat packs should be given subsequently, analgesia, antibiotics to reduce the risk of secondary infection and you have to request for the advice or management from the maxillofacial unit and arrange the review if to be managed in the dental practice. Now again, if we are doing the root canal procedure, so immediate irrigation of the canal with normal saline to dilute the sodium hypochlorite. Let the bleeding response continue to flush the irritant out. Now here I would like to mention, suppose we are doing something um, like a case of open apex. So in that, first of all, we have to make sure that we do not force sodium hypochlorite into the canal because there are very high chances that it is going to lead to extrusion and cause irritation to the patient. So in such cases, you can dilute it and make it at a lower concentration and make sure that the last wash is with saline instead of hypochlorite. Now, uh, after the uh, swelling, as we've already mentioned, advise the ice pack compression for 24 hours at 15 minutes interval to minimize the swelling. Then recommend wa uh, warm, moist compressors after 24 hours, again, at 15 minutes interval. Prescribe acetaminophen-based narcotic analgesics for seven days. Then uh, prophylactic uh, antibiotic coverage should be given for 10 days to prevent any kind of secondary bacterial infection. That is amoxicillin uh, 250 mg thrice a day or metronidazole 200 mg thrice a day in penicillin allergic patients. Steroid therapy can also be given if the situation is severe for two to three days just to control the inflammatory reaction. Now, another important thing before I finish this video is that whenever such incidents happen, please document it. It is very important that we document the volume, the uh, percentage of sodium hypochlorite that we have used and what kind of precautions we've been taking along with pictures of the patient for further reference because it is a very complicated case and in order to manage it, we should have the records. Along with that, we should also not forget that uh, 
sodium hypochlorite is not necessarily to be used at 5.25%. There are other methods of activation and we can increase the temperature, which is altogether a different topic to increase the efficacy of sodium hypochlorite. So we can have a certain concentration that can vary from 25 to 3%, which is acceptable in endodontics, along with various uh, activation therapies and increasing the temperature to increase its efficacy. So thank you. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel and any further doubts you can put in the comment section. Have a great day.